indeed it's always a joy and a pleasure to come in the presence of the lord because it is in the presence of the lord that whenever we are in his presence our lives never become the same and in this morning i will come you all in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and also with you let us pray the collect for purity almighty god to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid Praise the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins family resolve to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, in penance we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thoughts, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may save you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon your sins and set you from set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Collect for the weak. Reason Christ, you revealed yourself to the disciples and calm the fears. Meet us in our uncertainties and walk with us into the new life you bring. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the Bible lesson. First reading, Acts chapter 6, verse 8 to 15. Acts chapter 6, beginning at verse 8. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Sicily and Asia stood up and argued with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and spirit which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stops saying things against this holy place under law. For we have heard him say 
that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 190, beginning to read at verse 161. Psalm 119, verse 161. Princes, persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I ate and abdore false food, but I love your Lord. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous ordinances. Great peace have those who love your Lord. Nothing can make them stand. I hope for your salvation, O oh Lord, and I fulfill your commandments. My soul keeps your decrees. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees. For all thy ways are before you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Listen to the good news, proclaim in joy. Praise to Christ our Lord. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, start to read from verse 22. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the lake saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat, his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberus came near, place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw them, that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Verily, truly, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your, you ate your feel of the Lord's. Do not work for the food that 
perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God. That you, that you believe in him whom he has sent. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Let us pray. Eternal and sovereign God, we continue to lift your name high. We continue to honor you because you are King of Kings. Because you reign from everlasting to everlasting. Because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We lift you high because there is no any other God other than you. Indeed, our God, we call unto you because we know that, Father, you are well able to do exceedingly abundantly above what man can imagine. Now, Lord, you have exalted your word above everything. May this life word, may this life-giving word bring forth hope in the hopeless family. May this word, O oh God, revive every dying spirit in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we have prayed. Father, for you have said your word and your word has healed them all that are suffering. So, Father, may this word that we are sending today bring forth a healing in every body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I declare that your word shall not return unto your word, for it will accomplish that which it has been purposed for. So, Father, may you speak to us, for you are the unchangeable changer, for you are the king of kings. You remain the same of God. So Lord, may you do that which man cannot do. In Jesus' name, Lord, we have prayed. Amen. It's always a joy and uh, a great, great moment every time and whenever we realize that you are joining us and uh, you are spreading the word of God among us to friends. And uh, even as a family, it's always a joy, it's a blessing, and we always look forward having you in fellowshipping with us at this particular time and using this, this means of communication. I'm going to share with you in the very shortest time possible on the subject that I've entitled, The Power of God's Word. The Power of God's Word. Oh, a spirit power of God's word or the spirit food. So God's power is revealed and experienced in his word. If you want to know the God, if you want to know God's power, if you want to have a feel of his power, if you want to have an experience of his power, you can only have it through his word. You can never claim to have a relationship with God if you don't have one with the Son, if you don't have one with Jesus, you can never claim to have a relationship with Jesus if you do not have one with your Bible. 
So the Bible, it is a system by which it enables us to have a relationship with Jesus. So if you claim that you have a relationship with Jesus, you need to have one with the Bible. So the moment you spend time in studying the Bible, in studying the Word of God, it is the means by which you are solidifying your relationship with God. Most Christians today, we spend a lot of time in many other things, but we forsake a time to study the Word of God. We don't take the study of the Word of God seriously. I came across a story some time back that a certain preacher or a certain pastor was doing his pastoral visitation. He was going, visiting out the members. So one time he went to visit a certain family. When he was visiting this family and uh, somebody, let's say for instance, a mother of that family had prepared a token of appreciation to the pastor. So when she was preparing a snack for the man of God, she left and went into the kitchen. And she was in the kitchen then the husband had forgotten something in the bedroom so both of them left the man of God alone so the, 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 the money which the couple had prepared was in the envelope so it was the fun was around the table and because it was it was uh, it was quiet uh, the fun was on and the, the, the air was everywhere so the envelope kept on leaving, the, uh, the envelope kept on tossing, moving here and there. So the man of God within himself, he thought it wise to get the envelope and just put it inside the Bible of that couple. So the man of, the man of God just picked up the envelope, placed it inside the Bible and, uh, and, and he just left the Bible be like that. So as the fellowship kept on, the woman got back, the, the man got back and they had a snack. Then the man of God prayed for those for that family. When he prayed for that family, then he left. Now, before he left, they were looking at each other, trying. Could it be that my husband has given him the token of appreciation when I was in the kitchen? Possibly, yes. And the husband was, could it be when I was in the in the boat, when I was in the in the bedroom? Could it be my wife has given the token of appreciation to the man of God? Possibly, yes. But after the man of God left, then they asked each other, did you give the man of God the envelope? The husband said, no, I did not. Did you give him? And the, the, the wife said, no, I did not. Each one of them said, I did not. Then they asked, but how could he get the envelope? They concluded within themselves and said, that man has stolen from us because we have given him. We have given him. He has actually gotten before we get here. So they say we we'll never go to their church, we we'll never fellowship with them. So they just concluded within themselves and they left. They started up some other church. As the story goes, after some few months, they met at a mall. And the man of God asked them, say, come on guys, I haven't seen you at church for a longer period of time. What have you been up to? Then they say, ah, oh, you know what, to be frank with you, the last time that you came at our home, uh, something went missing. Uh, we had an envelope that we prepared for you, it went missing. The man of God responded to them calmly and said, I bless the envelope inside of your Bible. And to me this means, don't read your Bible, because if you could have been reading your Bible, you could have noticed that the envelope is in the Bible. So they judge the man in a way that they're not supposed to judge him. What am I trying to put across here? Many other things that the Lord has spoken to us which is inside the Bible. But we have made up our personal conclusion based on our assumption, based on how people have interpreted things without taking time to read the Bible. And Jesus Christ is looking at the people and he said, you have followed me, not because you want me, but because I fed you. Remember John chapter 6, 
is written after the account of Jesus multiplying bread. When people were fed, when people were full of what Jesus has done to them, and now most of them began to look after him. They began to look for him. They began to search for him. And Jesus must be saying, you are looking for me with a wrong motive. We are living in this generation, church, where people are coming to church with a wrong motive. They are coming to church so that they can have an honorable death. So that when they die, they can, they can mourn them in a Christian way. These are most of the motives that people are joining church today. We have a lot of religious folks and not believers. People that can follow religion from point A to point Z. But they are not believers. They don't believe. They haven't received Christ as their Lord and Savior. So it was the same. Jesus was looked at them and said, you are following me. Not because of anything else. But because you were hungry and I fed you. Now that I don't have food to give you, can you follow me? You have been coming to church because of maybe the, of, of its splendor, the way it looks. Now that the churches are closed, can you still remain and say, I am a believer? Now that churches are closed everywhere, can you still stay with your Christian values, with your Christian principles? Or maybe your faith is based on the religious rituals that we do every Sunday. Most people follow Jesus because of the signs. We go to the crusade now. We go and attend a conference now. When they say, come all those that are looking uh, for a job, come for a breakthrough. All those that are sick, come for a healing. All those that have lost their husband, come. Then you're going to get it. This is how we are approaching the things of God. So people are in church. Because they have a paper inside their Bible which says, I need a job and I have to come to church for a breakthrough. So we are going to church for a wrong motives. We are approaching the throne of God with a wrong motive. I challenge you, we have to search the Bible. Jesus Christ says, don't be concerned about the things, about the food. That spoils the body. But be concerned about the food that gives eternity to the spirit. So the food that spoils, this is the natural food. And the food that endures to eternity, it is the spiritual food. So children of God, the Bible here in the book of John it uses the word in yours. In yours is a common verb, which in Greek it is meno, which still means to remain or to stay. In the common sense, to continue to exist or to last or to persist or continue to live. It is the same phrase that Jesus Christ used in John chapter 15. That abide in me that I may abide in you. So when you remember John chapter 15, when he talks about the vine and the branches, he speaks of the same word. For the branch to be the branch that it can remain flourishing. It must remain attached to the vine. That is the same word that he used as in you. So for you to, to live as a believer, you have to remain in the word of God. You must remain attached to the word of God. So when you remain in the word of God, there is power that comes when you remain in the word of God. Number one, and let me share with you just three, then I'll close. What's how the power, or what does the power of God mean? 
or the effect or the significance of the power of the word of God. Number one, the power of the word of God, it reveals Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. When you study the word of God, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says God send the word, meaning the word has got the creative power to reveal. When he spoke the word, that word was creative enough to reveal. He said, let there be light, and light came forth. He said, let there be night, and night came forth. So whatsoever he spoke, it came to its manifestation. Number two, the power to refute. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, God's word is a standard against which all philosophers, ideas, or proposed solution of human conditions can be measured for accuracy. So the word of God, it is the only standard. So we use the word of God as the standard. Everything shall pass away, but his word will remain forever. And lastly, the word of God. The word of God, beloved, it is the power to revive. Psalm 138 verse 7. In the midst of trouble, you will revive me. The word of God is able to bring comfort and hope. In the midst of this COVID-19, may the Lord revive his church. In the midst of this COVID-19, may the Lord revive his own people. In the midst of this challenge, may the Lord revive your life. And as the Bible says in the same Psalm 138 verse 2, he has exalted his word above everything else. The word of God has been exalted above everything else. Children of God, allow me to submit to you now that the word of God is powerful than anything else. Let us abide in the scripture. As many people are coming up with solutions, as many people are coming up with everything, knowledge they can master but his word shall remain forever what he has said upon your life shall surely come to pass he has said you are the head and not the tail he has said no weapon formed against you shall prosper he has said the enemy shall come like a flood but the Lord shall raise the standard he has said that greater is he that is inside of you than the one in this world. I challenge you as a family. I challenge you as an individual. What the Lord has said over your life, it shall come to pass. His promises shall be fulfilled. He said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are a seal of his goodness and of his mercy cheer up child of god this COVID 19 though by night or by day it shall not come near your doorstep because the blood of jesus that speaks forth of a better report than the blood of abel shall speak healing upon your life in the name of god the father and of the son and of the holy spirit may the good lord bless you and strengthen you throughout this week in jesus name amen and amen
Thank you, Lord, for being with us throughout the whole night. Thank you for protecting us from all the dangers that desire, Lord, to take away around our lives. Now, Lord, we are here once again, another day that you have given unto us. We want to surrender this day unto you, Lord, knowing very well that you are the beginning and the end of everything. We surrender the lives of everyone unto your hands, O oh God, that you are all God that has made us in your image after your likeness. You may order our steps. You may order every program that we have today in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for your divine intervention in all our affairs, O oh God, that in your grace and in your mercy, our day shall come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Once again, we thank you for your word that, Lord, you have spoken unto us. Indeed, your word is power of God, for you cause the world into existence with your word. And, Lord, your word is still working in us, giving us boldness, giving us strength and hope even as we go through hard times in our lives. We pray that let your word penetrate in every mind that is divided because of the challenges that we encounter today. Pray give us hope and grace to pass through every challenge in Jesus' mighty name. We surrender, Lord, even the bone of cross and your hands. That indeed, God, you may continue to strengthen us, giving us hope, even in these difficult times, that God, we may continue, but accomplish the mission that you have sent before the bone of Christ, that your word, O oh God, may be preached to each one of us, and Lord, they may come to the repentance, becoming children of God in Jesus' mighty name. Wisdom, even to the leaders that you have entrusted, the bishops, the clergy, and all the leaders, O oh Lord, in different position. We pray that God, you enable them to lead your flocks in your word, in your truth, and to bring glory and honor unto you. We commit, O oh God, even the entire world unto your hand. Bible says the end everything in it, the world and all that dwells belongs unto you. So Lord, we pray that let your mercy reign upon the entire world, that indeed God, you may intervene in all challenges and difficulties that we are going through as the world. We pray for your healing upon every nation, Lord. We pray, God, for your power to reign upon every challenge that we encounter in Jesus' mighty name. We remember, oh God, even our families at your hands, even in these difficult times, in the midst of economic crisis, in the midst, of oh God, of other challenges in our lives. We pray that God let your love that never fails bind us together. May you alone be in our midst, O oh God, to solidify our love, to solidify the peace in Jesus' mighty name. Those that are facing challenges in their marriage, we surrender their marriage unto your hands, O oh God. That Lord, by your grace, you will enable peace to reign in that marriage. Meet the children of God, even the parents that indeed unity shall reign upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Not forgetting those that are not feeling well, wherever they are, your word says that you have sent forth your word to heal every healing. Father, it's our prayer that may you have mercy upon those who are not feeling well and let your healing hands rest upon them in Jesus' mighty name. We surrender within all those, God, that are in difficult times, that your mighty hand, O oh God, may reach those, all those that
that are in need, we pray that providence, God, may you meet them at their point of need. We give you thanks and we give you praise today and forever.
So we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we share, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crowns and the table. You are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Children of God, those that continue to join us, clergy friends, Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanks.
Let's give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us with your holy word and these holy mysteries, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere through this pandemic as living members of that holy fellowship to be our brother's keeper through self-distancing and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a nation of Zambia and as a people of God across the world as we, as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord, send us out into the world as we make social economic sacrifices during this difficult time in the power of the Holy Spirit and to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. May we remain in peace to love and save the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for fellowshipping with us today. We meet tomorrow again at 10 a.m. Central African time, our local Zambian time. May the Lord continue to bless you, and may the Lord bless you through this week.